I'm just standing here watching paint dry on this fountain bowl that I'm making and you know I have the camera set up and it occurs to me let's have a discussion about waterproofing. Let's have a discussion about waterproofing. And let's say you made something like this, or you want to make something like this, and you're picturing, I wanna make it out of concrete, and then I wanna fill it with water, and I want it to be waterproof. That's actually like, that is actually a really technical question and conversation, and a, there's a host of parameters that come into play here, but let's just distill it to its most simple forms. Unless you take some sort of drastic measure to make it waterproof, it will not be waterproof. If it's made of concrete, it will not be waterproof. It could potentially be water resistant. It might even be highly water resistant, but it will not be waterproof because it's concrete. Concrete is by nature a porous substance. Go out to your sidewalk out front of your home, pour a glass of water on the ground and look at what happens. The water goes somewhere. Where does it go? The concrete absorbs it. And there's your problem right there. So let's just pretend. I fill this to the, like, ignore this little channel here that's cut out, but let's just pretend it's just uniformly flat. We fill it to the brim with water. It looks great. We're so happy with it. And one hour later, you take a look and the water is halfway gone. Halfway. So what's happened here is that the concrete acts like a sponge. It just absorbs all of that water. And here's what would happen next. So then we refill it. And one hour later we come again. Is it halfway gone again? It is not. It's a quarter gone, you know, or an eighth, or just a little bit less, incrementally less. You refill it and then it takes longer each time because the concrete itself is reaching a saturation point where it's, you know, no longer actively uh, absorbing the water. And now it's looking to get rid of that water. Let's say you have this whatever sitting on the ground, the counter, your white carpet, whatever the case is, it's going to start to leach some of that water from the concrete, this slow process. Like if you were to put this thing there for a couple of days, lift it up, it'll be wet underneath there. And so the point of the video I'm making here is maybe just an entry point that be aware this is a more complicated process than you might be thinking through. It must have been 25 years ago, one of the very first things I made when I was like, hey, I can make stuff out of concrete. Why don't I make like a bowl? I'll make like a, I, I was building fountains and waterfalls for a living. Why don't I build like a countertop size one? Wouldn't that be cool? And so I made a bowl and I filled it with water. And long story short, it was hard to waterproof. It was not easy. And it took multiple attempts and failures at doing it. And it's, and if you're thinking to yourself, like, well, how does this work in the world of like swimming pools? I have a concrete swimming pool. What's going on there? And one, it's thicker, right? The concrete's thicker. It's going to have a higher compressive strength, meaning it's going to be less inclined to absorb water. So the, the rate of absorption of water is lower. It likely could have waterproofing solutions on it, a membrane solution or some sort of um, uh, like a flexible cement bond coat that acts as an impermeable, impermeable barrier, which is still compatible with concrete surfaces and interior finishes like plaster and tile and things like that. So did you just hear, oh, tile it and I'll be good? No, you did not. Because the tile itself, even if you use something impervious like glass tile or porcelain tile, the grout lines are not. The thin set you apply it with is not. It's all still part of this like concrete sponge description. And so it will leach water readily. And if it, you're going to put it in your garden or you're going to put it on your fountain or something like that, which is what I'm doing with this thing, it's going to sit right in the water. I don't care that it's not waterproof. But it occurred to me that you might care, right? There's a, I learned once upon a time, this is a lot harder than I thought it was when you want to make something waterproof. And if it's for outside, there's some like things you could do that are pretty easy. You might be thinking, well, I'll just use pool paint. Bada bing, right? Hey, you might not be aware of this. 
I'm Swimming Pool Steve and my alter ego with my other YouTube channel, which is much larger than this YouTube channel. And I tell you what, pool paint's not waterproof either, and you can count on that. And if you were to paint it with epoxy pool paint, like one of the better options that you could potentially use here, it's not gonna be waterproof. It's gonna be water resistant, but any pinhole, any pinhole, and believe me, you're gonna have them. It's gonna leach water through there, and once that process starts, it just gets worth, worse and worse, worse because as water erodes through concrete, it you know, takes a little bit of that cement component, and it, it becomes a liquid with the water, and it washes away in tiny incremental amounts, leaving behind only the aggregates, like the sand and the gravel, and making it weaker and more inclined to have water coursing through that area, because we create this area where there's a path of least resistance. And that's kind of the point, is the, the no thing short of an, a membrane or a waterproofing layer, which pool paint is not, it's a cosmetic finish, a waterproofing layer is the only solution to making a small tabletop concrete something where it doesn't leak. You know what you're better to do? You're better to get like a plastic bowl, like a good quality plastic bowl and mold your concrete around it and leave the plastic bowl in there. Like if you could find maybe a black, an ABS one, that'd be a great one to use and then it's black and you, you, it, you can make it look good in the design and completely remove this problem of figuring out how you're going to waterproof your vessel because through trial and error of myself and being somebody who was building swimming pools and waterfalls for a living, I knew that this was going to be, you know, I thought that I could solve it just, you know, some tile and stuff like that. And I'd yet to learn about membrane solutions and con more advanced concrete waterproofing solutions. And the bottom line is for an entry level project, you're... <laughs> Man, you're making your life so difficult here because it it's not really an entry-level project. I did it as one of the very first things, and I think a lot of people are inclined to do the same because who doesn't want it like a waterfall, water feature, a pond, something like this. If you're working with concrete as a hobby and making cool stuff, pretty much the number, the number one stuff people start asking about is water feature related. And it's actually one of the hardest things that you could take on. Make a potted plant, make a statue, make a stepping stone, make any other thing. When you start trying to waterproof a concrete vessel, you're going down a rabbit hole here. And remember, this is like a varying scale of importance. If it's going to sit outside, just be careful. It might leave a stain on your deck. And if you're like, oh, okay, cool. It's not really a big deal then. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Top it up with water when the water level is low, which will be fairly often. If you were thinking I'm going to make this and I'm going to put it inside, I'm going to have it on my counter inside of my house. Basically, any interior application for a concrete vessel, I do not like. I don't think that you're going to have success or the level of commitment it would take to achieve success would be so high with such a very, very high rate of failure along that path. Save yourself the heartache. Just be aware this is a technical monster. Waterproofing concrete vessels is not as easy as it seems. If you're going to do it outdoors, it's a little more lenient depending on your application. If you were thinking inside, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. Just use a plastic vessel that's not overfilled and plastic's going to be 100% waterproof and then you've solved your problem completely. I hope you found this information helpful. I don't mean to discourage you. I just want to inform you so that you can be prepared to make informed decisions and go into it with your eyes open.